I'm excited to have been granted the honor and opportunity to introduce to you all today a very significant young lady who has played an impactful role in not only my life, but other lives around me. She was born in Greenville, Mississippi in the early 1960s to a single mother and 12 other siblings. She would later go on to obtain an undergraduate degree from Alcorn State University and marry my father, who was a recent graduate of Mississippi Valley State University. They were both set sail to Austin, Texas and give birth to four beautiful children, including myself, in 1991. In the video you all are about to watch, she will explain how the extraction of the African American experience in history and in her education impacted her life, her educational endeavors, how she raised her children, and how she went out and interacted with her community. It will also show the systemic issues that this extraction has played in the lives of her children and how they in interacted with the world. So without further ado, it is my greatest honor that I'm able to introduce to you my mother, Miss Tammy Teresa Cheney. Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and that's about it. The stuff that was approved. So the stuff that approved during the, um, what is it, the Civil Rights Movement, whatever got approved and that we, we were taught that timeline, but not into detail, but we were just taught what led up to it. So it went from slavery, Jim Crow, and not even taught it really about Jim Crow, but um, slavery and then Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Rosa Parks. Stuff like that that everybody knows. But they never imagined that there were black people that did not support Dr. King's philosophies. Excuse no, because media got to remember media controlled by the white establishment. Mm -hmm. Black people didn't own any media, so they're gonna only put on there what they want to be put on there. And in school, they only taught. They never taught y'all that, of Everything course, because the, the state didn't mandate for them. That's right, and so just didn't know. And it was the news weren't going to tell us because they had an agenda, Jerry. Their mm -hmm. agenda was to keep us in our place. What was like Black History Month? A play. <laughs> you know, one of them old Black Harry Tubman pull out some of them old Black folks from history. Harry Tubman. I could name some John the Truth. Harry Tubman. Some John the Truth. It was a play. Harry Tubman. Some John the Truth. Rosa Parks. Martin Luther King. That was it. You played one of them characters. Mm -hmm. Had I known, I had an option. Uh huh. My history didn't teach me growing up that there was opposing views to Dr. King. We thought Dr. King was the main voice for all Black people, and he wasn't. I found out later. Thing I think of white people is I think we we grew up thinking white people are rich. Uh, All mm -hmm. white people are, are rich. Because there was only black people, poor people around you predominantly. The only people of status in the black community were your teachers and your mm -hmm. preachers. That's all you really saw. I never did. I never did. I never disagreed with segregation. Uh-uh. <laughs> why didn't why didn't you why didn't you disagree? <laughs> she said, she said, talking about we be we be comfortable with our own people. Say the nation. I never was outside. against that. Stop because I felt like that was a downfall of our community, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. When we had our own communities, our own little black teachers in our own community, they took care of us, they looked out for us, they knew our moms were working, trying to make a living for us, because most of them were single parent homes. Them teachers, they became your mom. So if you did something, they took care of it at the school. Your mama didn't have to deal with it. If they noticed you needed clothes or food or something, they got together and they came over to your house and made sure you ate and got clothes. They took care of their own. We took care and looked out for each other. When they integrated, you got with these little white teachers that were scared of you. Any little thing you did, you went to the principal office and got suspended. I'm all, if all my people coming from Mississippi compiling on this one campus, we all want to say bring our same Mississippi views there. 
Mm -hmm. You got people over in those areas, like what they were talking about, spam in Atlanta. They were coming from other places, from the East Coast. Maybe where they had different experiences. So, of course, they're going to assimilate together. But if all the, if everybody had the same experience coming together, you're not going to spark nothing new from that. It's going to be the same old thing. So, y'all was just trying to, crabs in a barrel, you weren't trying to uplift the whole community. Oh, you no, was just, you just trying, trying to... to Get a degree so you're going to get a job. You were just told that you need to go to college and you were going to college. That was basically it. Not because you had grand plans to change your community, uplift your community. No, it was personal. Oh, thank you. And with that mindset, because we as a people weren't told that we needed to, that that was our agenda. I didn't teach my child that that was his agenda. I always taught him diversity. I came up thinking, assimilate, be diverse, learn to get along with now all people. Now look at him. He's a white man. So I didn't send him to the school Boom. with an agenda of come back and help your community. Your community is your community made of blacks, whites, Hispanic, Asian, all kinds of people. So he didn't have a set agenda to come back and help the black and no. African Americans. A groupie that went to that Ivy League school, he did that all on his own. He went to magnet school all on his own. That was his desire. I tried to persuade him not to go through with it. I worked at the magnet school and I saw it was a school within a school. It was disguised as if it was in the inner city, but they had that school. It was literally a school within a school. The white kids never came in contact with the inner city kids that attended that school, that were fed to that school by their zip code. They took these affluent kids of great means and bust them to this inner city school. And, the, and, and on the outside, you think, wow, they're going to the inner city school, so they're going to get that experience. No. They were a school within a school. Their schedules were such, arranged in such a way, so they never had contact with them. Their lunch schedule was all with Magna kids. Changing the hall, bell schedules was different than the normal bell schedule. So they never interacted with the inner city kid. Mm -hmm. They were all in magnet classes. These were all advanced classes. Your inner city kids didn't qualify for those advanced classes. So they never was in the classroom together. They never had lunch together. They never had any classes together, no interaction. So it wasn't really truly the inner city experience. You could, on the outside of me, you would think that, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It might have been a fear of mine. That's why I did not live in the hood. I could have been my black self. I won't be in my black culture. No, because I knew crime. Police don't care about what y'all do over there. You can kill each other. I don't care. I knew I didn't want y'all in that environment because if y'all grew up in that environment, you would have been probably in the streets or locked up in jail somewhere. I knew I didn't want that. I was motivated by you being productive citizens, not locked up in jail somewhere. Being able to take care of yourself, not harming people in society. And she was shocked to tears. She Aww. started to cry. She said, I knew the black experience. I knew about slavery, but I didn't know it was like that. I said, yeah. I said, but it still persists today. We were brought today, over we still here have. as property. Mm -hmm. I said, we were viewed as property. We were owned by that slave master. And they gave us, you, whoever you owned, you gave you your name. And she was to, she cried. She had never heard it put to her like that. But I, 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 I thought, I thought she knew. Cause if somebody asked me where your name come from, I ain't gonna be nothing but honest. I'm gonna say wherever that white man, whatever plantation I was on, that's where I got that name from. Right? Mm -hmm. So she didn't know that. Now I don't know why we got on this conversation. I feel compelled to conclude this video in expressing my great admiration and appreciation for not only my parents, but my brothers who have received their formal education. My older brother who graduated from Cornell University went on to work with the city of Austin in bettering the quality of water for its citizens. My younger brother also graduated from Roosevelt University in a degree of political science in hopes of changing the political structure and system in America 
and the social injustices that plague this nation today. I am proud to call them my brothers and I appreciate them for not only what they've done in my life, but how they've impacted the communities that they live in. Thank you for watching this video and I look forward to your responses